The Patreon request this week was The Brave Little Toaster, the 1987 film, as requested by Steve Harvey's Ghost. Um, unfortunately, we watched the third one. Uh, Hang on a second. I do just want to correct this because I know the comments are going to flame us for it. Uh, the Mars one is the third one, Dylan. What? Okay. Okay, I was misinformed. That's what I thought. I don't know why I believe Dylan. I was I'm misinformed, sorry, okay? I said it with such confidence you had no choice but to believe me. Anyways, I guess we watched the first and second one. We watched the second one by accident. This is the second time we've done this to this Patreon. You're getting a real fucking bargain deal whenever you request these old children's <laughs> movies to us, apparently. Um, who wants to give the plot synopsis of both these films? I guess Tanner, you, Tanner, and Nico can both give one, I guess. Oh, uh, let's say them at the same time. Oh, God. Okay, so, uh, starting the, now. The Brave so Little the Toaster, brave little yeah, toaster to the Rescue is, is a film that's all about uh, the Brave Little Toaster and going down into the basement to hang out with the computer where his radio friend dies. He dies, and then they save the apes from Tartarus, the pit of hell. The woods, and they sing a couple songs. That That's gonna come out great in post. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my haiku, as inspired by the Brave Little Toaster. Stranded in the woods, appliances on a quest. Damn, they killed those cars. <laughs> and then my haiku as inspired by the Brave Little Toaster to the rescue. Living furniture has to rescue their pet friends. Toaster is useless. True. I'm very happy you suggested uh, talking about both these films at the same time, Jackson, because I was not going to be able to talk about the second film at all without constantly comparing it to the first one. <laughs> Uh, I was gonna say, this the, this movie, especially the first one, does show, like, the evolution of cartoons, where back in the time of this animated, you know, deal, it was just casual to just kind of kill, I know their appliances were just kind of casual to kill things and just be like, oh, they're dead now, well, let's move on, uh, and now in today's, like, people don't die in cartoons, and if they do, it's not shown and all this nonsense. Uh, I will ask, and I, I doubt I'm gonna get any responses from you guys. Do you guys have a favorite song or songs from either of the movies? Dude, I don't like musicals, and I didn't like any of the songs in any of the I films. don't know if I could... Uh, never mind, I can't make that claim. Anyway, uh... They're absolutely musicals. Anyway. I wouldn't say that I liked any of them, Damn. uh, particularly, but the ones that stuck in, out in my mind are the... The Frankenstein one, the uh, the car wrecking one, worthless, uh, yeah, and to a lesser extent, uh, the fucking uh, the remember one from Hell To yeah. the Rescue. What about you, Nico? I'm sure you loved absolutely none of them, right? Uh, yeah, I didn't. Uh, same as Tanner, I didn't particularly love any of these songs at all. Uh, I think that Worthless, I guess, would be my favorite. Uh, all the ones from the second film are terrible. Those were hot what? garbage. I didn't like any of them. Dude, a day to remember. I can. I literally cannot get that song out of my head, and I don't know why. The only other song. It from doesn't the even matter movie. how hard you try, right? Yeah, Keep exactly. That in mind, I designed uh, this rhyme to remind <laughs> myself. <why. laughs> uh, the other song I got stuck in my head from the second one was like the tap one, but that's hardly relevant. Uh, I don't know. the The first movie was kind of the voice acting was just not there for me really. Some of them did okay, uh, but Would also you say just, that it was better in the second one. Oh, 100%. You're a fucking psycho. Fuck you, Dylan. That's not true at all. The voice acting, everything from the first one is exponentially better than the second movie. Like, I it, can't. The, one of the first things I said when we were watching the second one was, man, the voice acting is shit in this film, which it was. It was terrible. But in the yeah. first one, th there's so much character to each and every one of them. Like, in the second one, th they're all the same fucking person, okay? They have no personality whatsoever. They're just, we're nice. That That's that's our traits whereas in the first one you know they're actually like these interpersonal conflicts going on each character has like their own little thing happening the blanket's fucking annoying i hate him but like you know that's fine i guess because like you know he almost dies multiple times which is nice at least which by the way the first movie is fucking bleak as well there is yes. so much death happening and allusions to death in that film you yeah. know <laughs> like yeah the ac kills himself at the beginning of the movie a flower dies of depression shortly after that when the toaster leaves him the blanket is getting murdered by mice he literally says they're killing me i thought that was an exaggeration <laughs> of terms <laughs> he says they're killing me as they're pulling him down into a hole where he'll never be seen again the fucking toaster falls into a bath that was great that was a dream 
Yeah, but still, it's that illusion, dude. It's the, something you would never see in a children's film nowadays. And, like, when they're getting, a, like, they're at the fucking auto parts store, and uh, that guy is just, like, tearing uh, this fucking uh, thing apart, and then you see just, like, some dripping oil at the end. It's like, you know, th that's, like, their blood, basically. That shit's fucking insane. <laughs> I did acknowledge that at the beginning of my review, saying, like, the, these older cartoons really just are nonchalant about death. Yeah, like, the uh, car is just getting destroyed. <laughs> Yeah. One of them just fucking hops right onto the wheel or whatever the fuck to kill himself. Mm -hmm. Do you think um, uh, Michael Bay watched this film and that's where he got the idea of, uh, oh, I can make a live action Transformers where I horrifically murder humanoid uh, figures, but because they're robots, it doesn't matter and it will still get the PG-13. Yeah, exactly. Probably. That's just like in Samurai Jack, where, like, all the early seasons, he's just killing a bunch of robots, which, like, you know, he's doing so in horrific fashions if these are people, but because <laughs> they're robots, the violence is acceptable. Yeah. True. It's pretty funny. Yeah, I don't know. I just... I forget. I, I completely forgot about what I was gonna say at this point, and... Nope, it's gone. Dylan, are, do you think that you enjoyed the second movie more than the first one in general? Yes. Oh my god. Yeah, no, Listen. I think the uh, I think the first one is vastly more entertaining, mostly just mm -hmm. because of the characters. Like Nico touched on previously, the second character, the second movie's characters were insanely bland. They had very little character to themselves. But the first one, they all felt very individual to each other. Um, also, there's like some character arc to them learning to love each other. That shit's fucking stupid. I don't care about that. But it's, <laughs> it's mostly a Disney just like movie. the voice actor. Is it a Disney movie? It doesn't fucking yes. matter. Uh, yeah, no. They uh, the characters are just so much more fleshed out in the first one, and they I don't know why they don't do anything with that in the follow up. It makes no sense. Like the fucking radio guy's funny. He's got the whole gimmick of like copying what's going on on the radio and like making that kind of his personality. That's fun, you know. They all, they all have like a little like quirk to them. Um, and that's just completely not present in the next one at all. It's very strange. Mm. Dylan, I'm kind of curious. What about the voice acting came across to you as better? Like, what was different that you noticed? It felt less stagnant in the second movie. I, it's It also has to do with, like, the audio cutting and everything and, like, older movies where you can, and, like, you could see where the audio clip ends and where it starts again. And I know that uh, that just comes with time as well. I just don't like it in movies. It feels very choppy. Um, and also just voice splicing as well, where they kind of have to take things, put them together in case, like, somebody screwed up midway through the sentence and all that stuff. This is just kind of minor stuff that bothers me. It just feels more flowy and cohesive in the second movie to me. You could be right about that second point. I didn't particularly notice that. As for, like, the being stagnant, uh, I think you're just wrong, and that they've <laughs> sounded far more emotive uh, in the first one, especially like with the songs uh, ah. and how they're singing and whatever, like they sound bored almost all the time in the second one. I don't know if I agree with that. Like the fucking cat in the second movie, like she, she, there's zero emotion behind anything she's saying. It's just like some random woman they brought in off the street to say, hey, can you read a few lines for us real quick? You don't need any context behind these, just read the paper. <laughs> Anyways, let's get to the elephant of the room and the yeah. biggest reason why the first movie is better than the second. You guys know what I'm going with for this. They oh, do. Yeah. I don't. Let's hear it. The, the girlfriend. Why did they whitewash <laughs> her and why did they make her less oh. hot in the second? What's up with that? <laughs> I, I did. I, I, I do remember asking at the beginning of the, the next movie. I was like, did he get a new girlfriend or is this supposed to be the same one? And it took me till like midway to the end of the movie to realize, no, that that's still her. Because also she doesn't have a lot of screen time, so I was trying to really figure that out. She just got like a she, tan or something that week, you know, so... <laughs> yeah, even in the just, first one, with the limited screen time of both films, she at least has like a pretty defined personality with how that she interacts in the first one. The second one, she's just some fucking woman, and there's yeah. like really no depth to her character at all. Uh, but there's some depth to like, you know, the main character. And also, I think the second movie's biggest flaw is just like the split like plot thing going on mostly mm. just because they're dividing up resources between two different plots and i don't think either of them are very good in the first place so instead of just like focusing on one like simple kid story they're like having like these two simultaneous things going on and like interconnecting at the end and they're both just really fucking boring um and stupid and because of that it just makes it even more boring and stupid and it really just doesn't take the landing at all yeah, and I mean, the scope is just so much smaller in the second one as well. Like, basically the only places they spend any amount of time in are the lab and the basement, and that's about it for the most part. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say I, I like the location variety in the first one. Yeah, but the first the, one was just a lot more creative artistically as well. Like I feel like they did a lot more fun things with like angles and stuff and just general cinematography. The second one is just like super cookie cutter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Despite all of this, guys, do you have a favorite character out of the movies? Radio. Yeah, radio. Yeah, the radio. I expected Nico to say radio. That's that's kind of. I guess that makes sense. You should have expected all of us to say radio. <laughs> apparently. Uh, I mean, I kind of had a feeling, but I didn't want to make assumptions. You know. What about you? Uh, I don't know. I either like the lamp or the vacuum cleaner. They're both pretty cool. Okay. I also like the radio, though. I'm not just counting him out. He's pretty cool, too. Guys, how have we not mentioned the fucking clown yet, by the way? The clown oh, yeah. scene. <laughs> Holy love with that shit. Right? Why was that in this movie? <laughs> which one? Well, what do you the mean, which one? one? <laughs> There's only one. It was like the horror scene in the second one. No, it was the first, the first one. one. I mean. yeah. It was in the first one, and Toaster had a nightmare and a fucking crazy ass clown attacked him yeah he whispers at him to run which by the way the decision to make him whisper that shit makes it like 10 times more terrifying yeah Neuron spine chilling yeah it's really funny about that part is i literally paused on the frame of him being like super close up when tanner and i were watching that movie and it just yeah. the clown just reminds me of something i don't know what like it just seems really familiar maybe it's just like Terrifier. a really generic way to draw like a no, it was not Terrifier. I was like, fucking, there's like a, uh, I don't think it is this guy. There's like a YouTuber, like, Colossus is crazy. That was a profile picture of, like, a clown face, and it looks like that, maybe. I also mm. haven't seen that profile picture in many years, so who knows. Um, it potentially, that's where you drew the inspiration of it from. It's impossible to say. Yeah. One other thing that I will uh, knock the first movie for, which, by the way, I don't think the first movie is a masterpiece at all. I just think it stands out so much more because of the comparisons you can draw between the two of them. <laughs> Um, but one thing, I, one big thing that I do want to knock it for is when the toaster sacrifices himself to fucking kill himself to save his master or whatever the fuck, they should immediately cut to him being fine again, just like him getting all <laughs> fixed up. I, I definitely feel like they should have uh, given it a little bit of weight, you know? <laughs> yeah, that did feel a little almost artifi- artificial. is not even the word for it. I just, it, yeah, it, it completely robs the moment of its meaning, so... I yeah, should have had a moment that. of like you know the guy like picking up the toaster and be like, oh my god, no, my toaster that I have so much sentimental attachment to for some reason, just like all the rest of these appliances. Why am I so attached to them? I might have autism or something, but you know, that, that was legit. Never... I watched a few reviews of these movies, and something that one of the people brought up is, I think the main character might have autism because of his attachment to all these uh, different appliances, which is a very uh, stereotypical thing that you'll see in these types of characters, which I appreciate the representation. <laughs> I personally sleep in bed with my toaster oven every night. Mm. I love him. I remember making silly faces in it when I was a small child, and I'll want to take it with me for the rest of my life. Yeah. Yeah, basically, uh, this movie is a worse Toy Story. Uh, why is this kid so attached to his toasters and shit? Uh, yeah, very weird choice, few, but... They, they did have quite a few moments I recognized in later Disney films, so I think that's a little... Yeah. Now yeah, with that, boys, do we have anything else to say about the brave little toaster duology here? I think it's no. funny that the name is like an ironic thing that people kill themselves with toasters, and there was a scene in the first movie where he was falling in a bathtub or forks with a sky. That, that shit do be cracking me up. Oh yeah, the brave little it's a suicide method for that. <laughs> it's my favorite suicide method. <laughs> well, boys, uh, kicking us off here. I guess, Dylan, we're the most curious about you. What are you ranking these films? God damn it, I knew this was going to happen, which is why I'm prepared. Uh, in chronological order, I gave the Brave Little Toaster a C-, and I gave the Brave Little Toaster to the Rescue a C+. Damn, that's basically the reverse of mine. Uh, I'm giving the Brave Little Toaster a C+, and uh, the Brave Little Toaster to the Rescue a D+. Oh, damn. <laughs> Um, I'm giving the Brave Little Toaster a B-, and then the Brave Little Toaster to the Rescue a C+. Hmm. Uh, and personally, I gave the Brave Little Toaster a flat C and to the rescue a D. And overall, that means the Brave Little Toaster lands at a C plus and Damn. to the rescue lands at a C minus. Damn wow. it! <laughs> Those are the wow. opposites of what I have. I was hoping to get at least one green check mark. Oh, well. <laughs> so you snooze, you lose, buddy. Pick the better <laughs> one next time. I, I, I did. <laughs> uh, pick the one where they go to Mars. Maybe. There you go. That one's a banger. I, I have nostalgia <laughs> for that one. Now that's a jump the shark moment if I ever heard one. <laughs>